Okay, let's bring in the jury, please. All rise for the jury. Please be seated. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back. I hope you had a good evening. We are going to continue with the state's uh, presentation of its case. Ms. Dahl, if you'd like to call your next witness, please. Thank you, Your Honor. The state calls William Sunderland to the stand. Mr. Sunderland, if you could please come forward and be sworn in by the clerk. Good morning, sir. Good morning. You're a little bit soft-spoken. That's a microphone. I want you to pull it forward and make sure you speak into it, okay? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Good morning, Mr. Sunderland. Could you please introduce yourself to the members of the jury? My name is William Sunderland. I want to turn your attention, sir, just right out of the chute, to October 8th of 2014. At that time, do you remember where you were staying that evening? Yes, I was at a motel off of McDowell in the I-17. Was that the night's in, sir? Yes. Uh, that evening, did something capture your attention in the early, early morning hours? Uh, it was roughly about 1.30 in the morning. My dog was sitting there growling at the door. I had woken up, and I noticed my door was actually, somebody was trying to open it. And so I got up and actually went to check to see if somebody was out there. No one was out there. As I was heading back into the room, um, over towards the front, there was a police pullover. I didn't think anything of it. There was a what? There was a police uh, pulled over somebody. And so I really didn't think anything of it at the time. Before you go any further, you mentioned that it was 1 AM in the early morning hours. Would it be fair to say that you weren't checking your watch? Yes. But do you remember the incident? Yes. Tell us what happened. Uh, so I was, as I was entering my room, I heard a gunshot go off. And I turned around and actually ran with my dog all the way down to the balcony and to see what was going on. They had a dark burgundy uh, Toyota Camry, Honda, whatever you want to call it. But it was a small, it was a small four-door vehicle. And they had just pulled it over, and they were actually going back and forth with gunshots. I know there was gunshots coming from the vehicle that they had pulled over, and then there were three officers behind that vehicle who were shooting back. Uh, during, in the middle of all that going down, one of the officers actually got hit in the face or got shot and went down to the ground. He looked like he was alive still. So the other two officers were actually trying to get him out of the line of fire, but the other, the, the guys in the, in the burgundy vehicle were actually just kept on shooting. Eventually, they ended up peeling out, and the other two officers managed to get the downed officer out of the way. And then from that point on, everything, I just kind of went back to my room. Did this happen very quickly? In a matter of speaking, yeah, it probably happened over the course of five minutes or so, but it seemed like a long time. Where? I want to focus on the four-door vehicle. Uh, do you remember if, well, let me ask you this. I'm going to put what's been admitted as Exhibit 74 up on, on the screen here. And there'll be a little screen in front of you, sir. Could you tell us where at the night's end that evening your room was? Was it on the first floor or the second floor? So my room is actually that almost that last door all the way to the right on the second floor. Is that the uh, corridor next to the Knights Inn that's in that exhibit, or is it the one that's... The main um, building where the main office is. Okay. Uh, and how many doors down was your room? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten doors down. So it's the 10th one as we're facing the Knights Inn to the right from the Knights Inn for the record? Yes. Did you run to 
toward the nighttime sign when you saw the gunshots? Yes, heard the gunshots. Heard the gunshots. Where from the four-door vehicle that had been stopped by the police were the shots coming from? So where those vehicles are right now, they were a little bit further back, the police cruisers, and the car was actually parked kind of closer towards the uh, building right here, right kind of right next to the to the to the night sign. So would it have been in front of the TPS police vehicle? Yes. And was it facing toward the night sign, the front of the vehicle, or was the front of the vehicle facing the opposite way? The front of the vehicle was facing towards the night sign. Where were the uh, shots coming from, from that vehicle? The rear window. Rear window behind the driver or behind the front passenger? The rear back windshield. So there, there was not, nothing coming out of the passenger windows. It was all going straight out the back. When you say straight out the back, would it have been from the back closest to the driver side or closest to the passenger side? I'll be honest, I can't really determine it was coming from just the back of the vehicle. That's all I know. Sir, do you remember being contacted by the police that night within a couple hours of this incident? I was talked to by a male detective. I can't remember his name. Does the name Officer Kaufman sound familiar to you, if you remember? Not really. I know he was kind of more of a, a mixed descent, so. And you remember that? Uh, do you remember saying that you saw a black sedan and you saw and heard gunfire? Um, I'm pretty sure I said dark burgundy at that time. But I know it was a dark colored vehicle. Did you uh, remember telling him that you saw an officer get hit and then the sedan drove off? Yes. And did you indicate that you believe that the right front passenger seat was a female wearing pink? Both the front passengers were female, yes. Do you remember if they were white, Hispanic, African American? I just know what kind of clothes they were wearing and what gender they were. What uh, clothing was the driver wearing, if you remember? The uh, driver was wearing pink. And uh, do you remember what the female in the right, in the front passenger seat was wearing? I believe white. Do you remember telling Officer Kaufman the front passenger seat female was wearing pink? Yes. Do you remember telling Officer Kaufman that you believe the shots fired from the vehicle came from the left rear passenger side? I do not. I just know that I remember telling him that it came from the back window. Uh, do you remember also saying that the vehicle passed by again? No. Do you remember uh, looking into the vehicle and seeing any occupants that may have been in the back seat of that vehicle? Yes, there was there was uh, what looked like a person sitting in the back seat um, behind a driver wearing white. Uh, and But I know at the time there was uh, another individual that I could kind of make out the silhouette on the passenger side rear. But I didn't know what they were wearing. Oh. Could, I'm sorry. So I didn't know what they were wearing, and I didn't know what gender they were. But I know there was a person there. You saw at least two people in the back seat? Yes. But the one behind the driver was wearing a white shirt? Yes. Is there anything else about that night that you remember? Other than it being very... Uh, very intense, no. Um, when the vehicle, the second volley of uh, shots came, where were there shots coming from the four-door sedan? All shots came from the rear, as from what I can remember. So no matter which way I tell it, it's all the shots are coming out the back window where the police officers, so if you look over here, there is one police officer close to the right, uh, that building on the right. There was one close to the uh, the main road, and then one one right down, smack down in the middle between them. And they were facing the car, which uh, the rear of the car was actually fit, uh, towards the back here. So they were facing towards the ninth end. So the front of the car was facing towards the ninth end, 
and the police officers were behind that car, kind of like three different angles. One was coming from the, the, the right side, the left side, and then the middle. So they were all shooting in. The guy on the right side, which would be to the right side of this screen here, he got shot down. The other two were trying to get it close enough to drag him out of the way, but they weren't able until that car had actually finally took off. Then they were able to actually grab the guy. At any point after the first shot, did you look away or seek cover? No. Uh, the first shot I only heard. So when I turned around, I ran to the other end and watched the whole scene go down. Did it appear that there was only one firearm being used from the sedan or more than one firearm? Uh, from the many gunshots that I heard, there was more than one. How many shots do you think were coming from that sedan? A lot. <laughs> it, was a, it was a good... Uh, at least 15 to 30 shots or so. Like, I, I know there was quite a, it was kind of like a back and forth situation, and it was, it, it was a lot of shots going off. Did you see the first shot that you heard that drew your attention as you were going back? No, home? because at the time I was actually getting ready to walk into my room, so my back was actually towards that, towards the scene when that first shot turn, uh, went off. But the second shot that went off, I was already going down to the back and, uh, balcony. When you turned around, was one of the officers already down on the ground, or do you not remember? No. Uh, the officer went down after I reached the end of the balcony. So it was about like a minute into the whole back and forth. He got shot, and he went down. Did, who shot first from what you saw? I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know who shot first, but I just know that the first shot sounded, and that's what drew my attention. And you definitely know that the shots were coming from the rear of the sedan? Yes. Nothing further. Mr. Lorenz. I have no cross. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions from the jurors? There are at least, there is at least one question. Take your time, and then once it's ready, we'll read the question. All right, sir, in Arizona, the jurors get to ask questions, but they do it through the judge. So I'll start with the first question. Is your testimony that more than one shot was fired from the car before the officer went down? Yes. Next question. Did the officer that went down fire any shots? All three officers were shooting at the back of the vehicle at that time, yes. Thank you. Third question. Can you explain again which of the three officers went down? The one on the right, the left, or behind the vehicle? Um, so in front of the, the, the building that I was staying in right here, the one clo uh, on the right-hand side where that truck is parked on the corner, if you look over there. I'm <laughs> Uh, was he the one closest to this building went down, so he would have been standing right over here. There would have been a gentleman right here and a gentleman right here. All right. It's the best way as I can describe it. Thank you. Ms. Dahl, any follow-up? Yes. Would that have been on the driver's side of the sedan or on the passenger side, if you remember? Passenger side. Now, let me ask you this. When you gave this statement a few hours after the incident to the officer, was your memory fresher back then, having just seen it, than it is five years later? It definitely would have been more fresh, yes. Nothing further. No cross, Judge. Thank you. There is an additional juror question. Next question. Do you remember where the sedan peeled off to, where it went when it left the scene? As far as I know, the only thing I remember about the sedan peeling off was it went through underneath, underneath the, the, 
If you want to stand up, you can. That's fine. So as it peeled off, it went through here, then it took off from there. I don't know where it went from there. So I know it, it went underneath this uh, overpass here, and then from there, I have no idea. All right. Thank you. Any follow-up, Ms. Dahl? No. Thank you. Mr. Lorenz. Thank you. All right, sir, that does conclude your testimony. Thank you very much for coming in. You are excused. At this time, we're going to take a five-minute break. The jurors will go back to the jury room, and we will bring you back in when we're ready. Thank you. All right. Please be seated. We'll go off the record for about five minutes. Let me know when you're ready, okay? Thank you. Thank you. 